I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with your cattle market summary for the week ending September the 30th. This down market's got me thinking of an old cowboy buddy of mine that getting a deal like this and he'd say, I feel just like a rat in a trap. He said, I don't even want any cheese anymore. I just want out. And that's kind of where all these cattle people are. They, don't, they, they know they're not going to make any money. They're not asking for that. Just stop going down for a little bit, please. Uh, find find a bottom somewhere. Give us a reason to think that uh, eventually they're not going to go to nothing. But uh, boy, you just sure didn't get that feeling this week. It's just everything just dropping like a rock, and and now we've got our fat cattle below a dollar, and we, we're just wondering where we're going to find some support somewhere. I believe we should be able to find it here pretty soon up here in the 90s. But now I'm starting to hear some people thinking it's going to go even further than that, and. And either way, these yearlings and calves are way too high for that kind of a market, and, and they're going to be coming down bad too. But you look at your futures for the week, uh, your live cattle board on Monday was down 45. Tuesday was down the $3 limit. Wednesday was down 35 cents. Thursday down a buck 57, and Friday down the $3 limit. We just hope we don't go to expanded limits on these uh, live cattle futures on the way down. But uh, ending the week on Friday at 98.90, that's 8.37 lower for the week, and finished under a dollar for the week for the first time since 2010. Feeder cattle, Monday was down a buck 32, Tuesday down 4.20, Wednesday was up a dollar 17, Thursday down 52 cents, and Friday down 4.35 to end the week with the October feeder cattle at 123.15 which was down 9.22 for the week. Your September feeder cattle went off the board and left at 133.95, and that's where the CME cash feeder cattle index was there at the end of the week at 133.95. But your real-time index on Cattle Market Central and more up to date there through uh, even Saturday sales there, the few that we had, uh, was at 128.19, and this thing's going to keep rocking lower. And now we're getting into October, and, and, our, and our board right now is five bucks lower than what our cash is, and it's just hard to imagine where we're going to find the support coming from. Uh, your fat cattle for the week, uh, the bulk of them sold middle of the week from 103 to 104, but then we had some late sales in Nebraska at, at a dollar, and we had some sales through the week up in Iowa at 98. So there we are, sub a dollar. Uh, on your live fat cattle price, that's two to three dollars lower early, six bucks lower late than the same than a week ago's cash market. Your dress trade 161 to 164, most of them around 163 there middle of the week. That's four bucks lower. Box beef cutout values are supposed to be making a rebound here as we enter this fourth quarter. Uh, they trended pretty good through the week, but then was down hard on Friday. But uh, I like to go by the average of the week sales on choice was 188.63, which was actually 215 higher uh, than the average for the previous week. But like I said, late in the week, they fell hard again. And your select average uh, carcass sales was 179.20, which is down 27 cents. You look at your slaughter for the week, and that, that's our, our biggest fundamental indicator right there. And that's what's hard to figure is, We've been slaughtering a lot of these cattle and should be working our way through them. I don't think that we were really prepared for the, for the type of supply increase that, uh, that we've got. We think we're pretty current, but our, but our weights keep increasing a little bit. Of course, they're not near the record levels they were a year ago, but we're killing so many of these cattle now, and it's just not helping us out any. And uh, we expect to be getting a little bit shorter on your market rate of cattle for the next two or three months. And... Perhaps that'll help, and perhaps that'll help before these fat cattle get down into the 80s. Hopefully it'll start helping while they're still kind of in the mid-90s there, because that, that's sure low enough. But uh, your slaughter for last week was 611,000, which was 19,000 more than the same week uh, last week, and 42,000 more than the same week a year ago. Our slaughter is 4.5% uh, more than the same year to date than, than uh, last year and uh, well, you would think that we'd be working through these things. I tell you what, it's these other proteins that are hurting too. Your hog slaughter the last two weeks has been in the top five ever on record 
and uh, and we're talking about nearly two and a half million hogs a week, and then and those hog deals. I've said it before that. The, the, and the cattle industry is going just that way, people. So if there's anything you can do to stop it, please help for our kids and our grandkids. Because these, 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 uh, these slaughterhouses or these hog facilities, uh, you know, they're all in cahoots with the, with the hog processors, and everybody's contracted up. Nobody knows what a hog's actually worth anymore, and and they've got a big dial on the outside of those buildings, and they can just turn that uh, hog production up and down and, and it's just it's so fast you know three months three weeks and three days and you've got a lot more hogs than you had before and and it's it's really hurting the cattle business and, and all this protein your cheap chicken and everything and it's hard for these cattle guys to compete but you look at your uh, cash feeder cattle markets for the week uh, your yearling feeder cattle and your wean calves five to ten bucks lower uh, unweaned ballers and shipped in calves from the southeast, three to six dollars lower for sure. Uh, spots ten or fifteen bucks lower. But uh, like I said earlier, you know, if if this is all we're going to be able to squeeze out of the fat cattle market, these yearlings and calves are way too high. They've got to back up. And I know that money's cheap. I know hay's plentiful. I know uh, grain is cheap. But it don't matter. You can't back them up that much, and, and you've got to get them lower. And the bad thing it is, I think, about these these calves, and and not necessarily your high risk calves, but even your big ranch strings of calves, they're going to be coming in, and, and most of those are unweaned, but they are well processed and taken care of, one iron kind of deals. But uh, there's going to be a world of them show up here in the next six to eight weeks on the market, and uh, most by this time of the year, most of the time, a lot of high percentage of those calves have been either private treated or they've been sold on the video but the market was falling so fast there through the summer whenever those videos happened and it's just continued to fall and uh, and you just couldn't come to agreement with some of those ranchers on telling them that their calves were worth about a third what they were a couple of years ago and so that you just didn't get together so it's good for the sale barns. There's going to be a lot of these big calves show up in the sale barns here, like I said, the next six to eight weeks, but uh, it's, it's going to be rough now. And probably one of the things that's going to hurt the most is it's going to be impossible to find trucks coming out of that ranch country in Nebraska and the Dakotas and, and Wyoming and, and Colorado and places like that because you've got trucks that are already scheduled to pick up previously contracted cattle and then you're going to have a lot more cattle showing up at these sale barns and guys are going to be buying them and the, and the prices are going to be a lot cheaper and then those calves are going to have to sit around waiting on a truck to get them to where they're going uh, they get stale in there they get sick in there and then we start having the big uh, temperature swings from the hot days and the cool nights and all the airborne illnesses in there and, and it's it could really really be a wreck on this calf deal and I hate to say it, I hate to see it. I mean, the, the only good thing you can say about it is for people that turn them over a lot, you can handle at least or more twice as many as you used to uh, for the same money, and most of us still figure a profit by the head, so why not have more of them? But uh, that's what we need is some demand on these things. Uh, you might have uh, noted there late in the week, I talked about the, the Fed Cattle Exchange, that online uh, fat cattle sales there uh, through Superior. They're yeah, really uh, try, trying to get this negotiated trade going. Uh, it, it's kind of a tough sell because these packers don't have to compete with each other for their fat cattle. So why would they want to go into an arena where they have to show competition? Uh, so it's going to be hard to get that going. But Market News USDA has said that they're going to come in and put that information into the uh, weighted average on your for your uh, mandatory price reporting information well the weighted average on that sets the uh, sets that price that a lot of these formulas go off of and uh, I personally I just think that was a bad deal because you're, you're not going to get your packers to come in there and give any more for those cattle if, if they think it's going to affect the bottom line on their weighted average price that, that uh, goes their formulas go on which they've got a world more of those going to be priced off of that than they ever buy in a negotiated business but uh, you look at some individual quotes on cattle market central there late in the week in Lexington Nebraska 
just after lunch there. Now this is a really top quality sale there. I've been to that sale several times and for you good guys in the southern plains and in the southeast uh, that watch uh, gooseneck and bumper pull trailers pull up to a sale in Lexington, Nebraska, they, they line up like pots and, uh, and a lot of one iron cattle in there and very few odds and just strings and strings of cattle. You know, I've, I've watched time and time again just shaking my head at them sorting one or two black baldies off three or four loads and a string there and you just can't believe it that particular but uh, that's what kind of quality we're dealing with but on Friday there they had 200 head of 890 pound steers bring 128.10 and that would be a, a big premium it may not sound like a whole lot but that's that's a, that's about a bigger price you're going to find on heavy cattle anywhere I also would like to uh, mention the passing of my good friend Ray McDowell uh, there in uh, southwest Missouri. He was a, a market reporter in his younger days for the state of Missouri. He was a uh, he worked for Joplin Regional Stockyard, worked with Jackie Moore there for years and uh, in, in the last uh, probably 20 years or more uh, ran a sizable operation there, a growing yard uh, in southwest Missouri. They're just west of uh, Springfield. He, he, bought a lot of calves in the sales and, and got them healthy, turned a lot of cattle out in the Flynn Hills, and, but just a real quality guy and a guy that I always like to sit in the sales with and talk about the market and I'm really going to miss Ray. But uh, you talk, working here at DV Auction at my home office in Canyon, Texas, be sure to go on to dvauction.com and check out our fall production sales schedule. Got a lot of uh, good breeding stock coming up and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.